Thousands of animals at Zoo Miami were in the path of Hurricane Irma, but the zoo had a plan to protect them. It's a lesson that they learned after suffering major damage during Hurricane Andrew. We are joined now by Zoo Director Ron McGill, who's a veteran of this. Ron, it's good to see you. It's good to see your face. And we have to ask you how the residents of your fine zoo are this morning. Well, I'll tell you, we've got a lot of physical damage, a lot of trees down, a lot of fences down. But every animal, including Toshi here, who's been through Hurricane Andrew, Hurricane Irma, Hurricane Katrina, and Hurricane Wilma, are doing very well. We do have an iconic picture, I think, of Toshi from back during Hurricane Andrew. And there's that trailer that had fallen out of the sky. Um, and he's... That's he, right. He, yeah, he's faring very well, huh? Yeah, yeah, he's done very well. That That picture was taken right here in this pen. It was right behind him. That trailer had fallen out of the sky from 100 yards away. Fences were all down. Holes were in the fences. It wasn't a scratch on Toshi. It's incredible how nature knows how to protect itself in these types of disasters. Talk about some of the real important changes that were made structurally there at the zoo, Ron. Well, Hurricane Andrew leveled this place. I mean, literally, the north eye wall of the storm came through here, and it was totally level. So when we re rebuilt it, Miami-Dade building codes are probably the highest, strictest in the country right now because of the hurricanes. We built several buildings that we were able to use as bunkers for a lot of the animals, whereas there was another iconic picture where we used to put the flamingos in the public restroom here. They now actually have their own pavilion. They've kind of upgraded to a suite, and these are all hurricane-built buildings, and all the animals, thank God, survived well. As a matter of fact, we had an animal born the day before it hit. Two days ago, we had a little Anoa born. Oh. It was just a day old. And we said, oh, my gosh. And this morning to go out there, I was out there with the photographer, and we saw it standing up nursing. What an incredible signal of hope for all of us to show us how nature does so well. I know. We wish we could give a little squeeze to Toshi right there. And I did see those all over yes. the Internet yesterday, kind of the march of the pink flamingos yeah. as they went out. And, I mean, what does it mean to you, Ron? Because obviously this is a storm with a great human toll, a great economic toll, mm -hmm. but people really care about your animals, mm -hmm. and we know you do too. Well, you know, I cannot say enough about this amazing staff. These people really worked 24 hours around the clock for several days, not only securing things to become projectiles, but getting animals into safe places, making sure they had their food, making sure they had extra water. You hear all the sounds behind me. Those are all the generators running. We have no mm -hmm. power here. The place is physically kind of very badly damaged, but all the life system supports things are up. We were here 24-7 during the storm. There was a team here on grounds, so everybody made sure. And I'm telling you, when you come in here, there's a lot of damage, but to realize that not a single of over three thousand animals that we have here suffered a scratch. Yeah, but you know why people care so much? Because zoos are part of the fabric of a community. Yeah. I mean, everybody remembers from when you're little and you go to a class trip <laughs> at a zoo to when you're older and you take your own kids to a zoo. It's a part of every town and city we live in. Absolutely. And you know, it's a place... Listen, I work at a zoo today because I remember as a small boy going to the Bronx Zoo and getting that connection with animals. This is sometimes the only way children can get a connection with wildlife mm -hmm. and it's important they understand how important it is to all of us. And Ron, real quickly, I mean, I don't know, this, this may be a silly question, did you get the feeling that any of the animals recognized what was coming? People yeah. always say that they can. Well, I'll tell you, uh, animals certainly got nervous right before the storm, but that could also be just feeding off of us. Just like mm. with your pet dog or pet cat, you know, when you're sick or you're anxious or you're nervous, your pet feeds off of that. These animals realized the routine was changing. Animals are creatures of habit. When that routine changes, what happens is they get a little nervous. Yes. I will say, though, right before the storm, there were a lot of native birds around here. And that was a good sign for me because before Hurricane Andrew, which totally devastated this place, 24 hours before the storm, you couldn't find one right. bird, even though it was a beautiful day. Ron, Toshi I think wants this animal has an instinct. The animals have an instinct. Toshi wants more carrots. Yeah. So come on. <laughs> stop, stop. Hey, Ron, thanks. We're happy <laughs> things worked out all well. He wants. <laughs> good, to be treated. good to see you, Ron. Thanks Bye. very much. Thank you so much. Hello, Today fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.